everybody, I'm Art from the A to Z Show, and welcome to Roll Film, where we cover the latest movie releases of the week and tell you what's good and what's bad. But considering that it's the beginning of the year, we must embrace ourselves for those Oscar releases. However, because it's the beginning of the year, we're not going to get a lot of the new releases right away. They're going to be very sparse because all of those Oscar bait movies are finally getting their wide releases. But what is an Oscar bait movie, Art? Well, I'm glad that I asked. Pretty much, Oscar bait movies are those films that are tailored to campaign for Oscars, be it in the story or the way that they cast the film, who they choose to direct, or even the release dates, it's all tailored just to be able to get those people in the Academy to vote for their film. Does that mean that all Oscar bait films are bad? No, not necessarily, but the term Oscar bait is used for those films that try so hard for the Oscars and then epically fail. So let's get into the three that we have today, starting off with the first, which is The Danish Girl. And The Danish Girl is a movie that comes from the director, Tom the Oscar Bait Hooper, who I feel is pretty much a guy who they call up every year and are like, hey, we need another contender. You got it? Awesome. And it's not so much that he's a bad director, but he always goes the route of picking a subject that he knows people will enjoy because it relates to them but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good movie because many times it's very melodramatic. So what we have with this one is the best actor from last year and the busiest actress of last year as well. I mean, just look at everything that she's been in. Coming together to make a pseudo biopic that's also based off of a novel of the same name of a man who is married, who at a certain point in his life decides he wants to be a woman and becomes also the first person to go through with a sex change. However, like I said, just because it is a hot topic that they're covering doesn't mean that it's going to be a good film because if you're lactose intolerant this is one of the cheesiest films of 2015 you have eddie redmayne who i don't think he's a bad actor however he plays these characters that are just again very melodramatic and it seems like they always have to depend on the female character that is in the movie and when i say depend i mean like rely completely and not help them in any way shape or form and that's what he's been doing in a lot of his movies with this one he decides yeah that commitment i made to my wife never mind but that person needs to be there to help me out with everything and i'm not going to help them out in the theory of everything, he becomes disabled and it's his wife who needs to help him out, then he cheats on her. In Jupiter Ascending, well, everybody needed help with that one. And while the movie is able to give its message across, and even has a really great performance from Alicia Vikander, who truly is the standout, the heart, and they even refer to her as a Danish girl, it goes from her point of view to then Eddie Redmayne's, and Eddie Redmayne's is sort of like, it's not that I couldn't connect with it, but he really is melodramatic. There is a scene in this movie that is so over the top with what he says, you're like, this has to be a joke. However, by the end credits, I still say that there is some merit to the movie that I would still give it a rent it. However, moving on to the next film, which is The Big Short, we see a pretty impressive cast, which is covering four different perspectives of the guys who took advantage of the housing bubble in 2008 and banked off of it. And this was a film that you can definitely get Wolf of Wall Street vibes of because that was the latest Wall Street movie that we got. And the movie is very aware of that, starting off having those vibes in the beginning and even having some moments where they allude to Wolf of Wall Street and cameos and such. But it's different from that because it's a little bit more serious or way more serious. It's trying to cover the emotional side, but even the business side of an event, a tragedy that happened not too long ago. And while it's a film that definitely tries to handle the business side and the emotional side of it, and it's reinforced by really great performances, for me, the standout being Steve Carell, it kind of muddles in that, and where it's trying to tell the audience, here's the business side of it. It may be really confusing, so we're going to throw so much at you, see if you can handle it, but then let's look at the emotional side of it, and where we're supposed to be rooting for these guys, but then they don't even like what they're doing either. And it kind of muddles at a certain point where you're not sure, okay, are we looking at these guys or as people who are trying to take advantage of it, knowing how it's going to end up, or are we trying to go more on the emotional side? And it tries to be, again, that business aspect where we're looking at it from that point of view and then the emotional side that sometimes is just not really deciding where it wants to go. Two perfect examples of it would, one, be the ending where you think, oh, it's going to climax into something that okay, the whole movie did not go that way, or even just having Brad Pitt, who produced this movie, and he does something that he's done with a lot of his other movies, where it's like, I'm gonna help out, and then be like, no, guys, what we did was morally wrong, and it's like, then why did you help them out to begin with? I still think it is a very solid movie, with really my biggest issue out of all of it being the cinematography. 
The cinematography in this movie makes an episode of The Office look like it was directed by Tom Hooper. Like, did the focus puller just take, I don't know, like, weeks off? I, I have no idea what happened. Regardless, by the end credits, I would still say that the movie is worth watching at the junior price in theaters. And last but not least, we have Carol, which is directed by Todd Haynes, who has made really incredible films. This one right here in particular, covering uh, similar themes but I would say does it better than Carol. And Carol is a movie that has been getting a lot of praise, and I actually think it is worth a lot of that praise when it comes to the technical aspect of having it feel like, yes, this movie really embodies that time period. Yes, it has amazing performances from these characters that are written in a way that don't have any plot holes or and don't make, you know, decisions that make absolutely no sense within the realm that of the world that has been created. But, again, just because something is being represented that connects to you, you have to be able to still not just go, hey, I automatically have to like this, or this is something that's a hot topic, I have to like it. Let's dissect it and realize that by calling this the best love story of 2015, you're lying to yourself, because it's not a love story. It's a lust story. Again, it's a very well put together film, but people saying, oh, it's so emotional, don't realize that if Carol was Carl, this movie would have gotten a much different reception from people. Because if it was a dude in the role, then that character would have been considered a scumbag dad, a heavy flirt from the beginning scene of this movie, and a person who cannot make up their mind, literally sending people on a road trip and then kind of dipping on them. Like I said, there's nothing wrong in the movie or even a movie that would have had a guy to do that if it's directed perfectly well, which it is. It's a fantastic story in that sense but the characters aren't really that intriguing as people are making them out to be, saying that it is this amazing love story when it's like, why are you lying if you know if it was a dude, it would not be that. For film fans, it's definitely worth watching because the grain in this movie and the production design is beautiful, costumes, all of that, including the performances from these two actresses who do a great job. But personally on that level and just calling out a lot of people who are saying it's a great love story, it's not. However, like I said, I'm not denying it being a very well-made film and deservingly so for people who want to put it on their top 10 list, but for me, by the end credits, I'll say that it is still worth watching, but at that junior price in theaters. However, those are my thoughts on those three films. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, whether you agreed or you didn't, or you have something else that you want to add down below. Also, make sure to check out ATZ Flicks, where I have more in-depth reviews on all of these movies that you can check out, along with many of the other ones that are coming out. We can talk more about film over there on that channel. However, here we can discuss these movies down below anything else dealing with film and of course don't forget if you don't want to get stuck taking care of eddie redmayne's newest character then comment like and subscribe down below and i'll help you out keep watching movies and until next time i'll see you guys later